My name is uh, Harry Badesha and I'm the Tata Steel Professor of Metallurgy at the University of Cambridge. My main area of interest is the metallurgy of steels. Steels uh, represent one of the most complex of materials with an almost infinite variety of structures that can be generated by altering the chemical composition or the processing route and we have yet to discover many more uh, techniques for improving the quality of steels. If you go through the channel tunnel then the train will be going over the rail steel that uh, I invented totally by using theory. Okay. Then there is the uh, latest which is the superbainitic armor uh, that is built on the foundations of a very very long piece of research going on for more than 30 years where we try to understand the mechanisms of a particular crystalline form called bainite. We now have the world's first bulk nanostructured steel, one of the applications of which is this uh, superb armor. I was born in uh, Nairobi, which is the capital of Kenya, and my parents were born in India, but they emigrated to Kenya for work. So uh, traditionally, my family comes from the carpenter caste, so in other words, skilled craftspeople. And the Kenyan authorities needed such people in order to do construction of buildings, hotels, etc. So they encouraged people to emigrate from India to Kenya, and that's when my parents moved in, uh, very young and uh, newly married. And my interest in science was uh, inspired actually by going to my father's workplace. He used to work uh, in a battery shop, basically, Axide batteries. And of course, they, uh, they didn't make the batteries there, but you could see all the components of the batteries, how you test them to see whether they've reached the end of their lives. There were acids and various other chemicals. You could measure the specific gravity of the fluid inside the battery and so on. So he also had a book at home called the Lead Acid Storage Battery, which I was able to study as best I, as I could, but it really got me hooked into science. And I had a, a basically a chemistry set and a, a skeleton and all the sorts of things that children can buy to practice science, a little microscope and so on. Then uh, after independence, uh, the Kenyan government decided that it would have a Kenyanization policy and therefore those people who are not citizens of Kenya would steadily lose their jobs. Uh, so we had uh, no choice but to apply for emigration to Britain. And in 1970, we were granted permission to emigrate and we moved to London, uh, living on top of a shop in East Ham. So when we moved to Britain, uh, I was about 16 years old and I applied for a job at the British Oxygen Company as a technician in a quality control laboratory, even though I had absolutely no experience of any, uh, any work before then. And I got the job at the British Oxygen Company. Uh, there was a human resources person whose name, unfortunately, I forget. But he suggested to me that I should do part-time studies which involved one day a week and an evening a week. So they would give me time off for a day to attend the East Ham College of Technology so that I could do ordinary national sciences, a certificate in ordinary national sciences, and I did chemistry, physics, and maths. Uh, and uh, I did very well in that. So if you get distinctions in ONC, that's equivalent to uh, A-levels. So, Thinking once again about the uh, kind person from Human Resources who basically changed uh, the course of my life, um, it was especially uh, touching because at that time there was a lot of, uh, certainly in East London, there was a lot of resentment against immigration because people thought they were taking their jobs and, you know, you look different, therefore there's something to talk about. <laughs> So we had the National Front, for example, quite active in uh, East Ham and the surrounding area, Dagenham and so forth. Uh, so it was in that environment when a person who is white comes to help you, that actually quite uh, gives you confidence in 
uh, human beings, basically. So can you explain uh, roughly what, what you're doing? Yeah. I think that if you're at all curious and you're willing to take that curiosity forward, in science there are no barriers as to where you come from, what your background is, what your nationality is or what your age is. You basically try and pursue your curiosity to some goal and once you succeed, you know, it drives you forward.